Thanks for joining me for another video. My name is Sean and I'm a clinical dietitian. Today we are going to be focusing on water flushes or meeting our patients hydration needs. In some of my other tube feeding videos we would use either standard flushes or you might have seen us work out some of the math for the flushes. So let's spend some time talking about exactly what flushes are, how to calculate them, and other considerations that we need to think about when we're doing nutrition support for a patient. So uh, first and foremost, in order to figure out how much um, flushes that you need, you need to figure out how much water your patient needs. And there's a lot of different equations that we use for that. Some of the equations could be one milliliter of H2O per kcal. So if your patient needs 2,000 calories a day, you could give them 2,000 milliliters of water. Uh, another estimate would be something like 30 to 35 milliliters per kilogram. And you could use ideal body weight over here, ideal body weight. If you have a patient that's obese, uh, then their water needs would just be way too high. So using an ideal body weight could be uh, a way to figure out their hydration needs. If they're a little bit older, let's say they're 70 or older, you could drop this number down 25 to 30 milliliters per kilogram. There's other formulas out there, but these are sort of the basic ones that we use here in the hospital. Now, in terms of uh, figuring out what flushes to give them, what you do is you run your math through this equation. So let's say that we have promote uh, with fiber here and we're going to run it at uh, 50 milliliters per hour. So how much water does that formula give our patient? So we use this equation. Our rate is 50. Let me get my green marker here. Whoops. I'll get my green marker here. So let's say this promote is running at 50 an hour and we're going to do a continuous rate of 24 hours per day and our bottle size here is a thousand mils so your formulary will tell you per liter or whatever bottle size how much water is in that formula so whatever size bottle that formula is in that's what you divide from here so this says size of bottle in milliliters so we do 50 times 24 is 1200 divided by 1000 gives you 1.2. So this person will receive 1.2 liters per day of promote if it's running at 50 an hour. So we take that 1.2 and we multiply our water by 1.2 because there's 831 milliliters of water per liter of formula, and they're getting 1.2 liters per day. So 831 times 1.2 gives you 997. 997 milliliters of free H2O. Can you all see that there in the corner? Yeah. So. Let's say our patient weighs 50 kilograms. We have a patient who is 50 kilograms, and we're going to multiply that by 30, okay? Or we can, do, we can do a range. We'll do 25 to 30. 25 to 30 per kilogram. That's going to give us not enough 50 times 25 1200 to 
milliliters per day. So what we do is we subtract from their uh, needs what they're getting from the formula. So, so we said our patient needs 1,200 to 1,500 milliliters. They're getting right around 1,000, so they need somewhere between 200 to 500 mils. This is what's left. So there's a few different ways that we can do our flushes. Now we talked about Q four hour flushes. This means every four hours, water will be ran through their feeding tube to keep it open. Any sticky stuff that's in there, medications, additional formula, gunk, whatever it may be is flushed through it. This helps keep that tube open instead of being uh, included. Sometimes you can get blockages in feeding tubes and that can be a real hassle. So you free water flush your tube. Now Q4 hours is standard protocol. That's what most places will do. And that means every four hours or six times per day. You can also do Q6 hours. Let's say your patient needs to have less fluid. Uh, we're um, holding back fluid from them because they have too much fluid on board. They're fluid overloaded. So we can do Q6 hours or every six hours or four times per day. So let's do our Q4. So we'll take how much they need. So they need an additional 200 to 500. And then we can just divide that by six times per day, right? That's Q4. So let's just take the upper number 500 and divide it by six. That gives us 83. So we could say that on the upper end, they need 85 mils Q4 hours. And you all see that? And then on the lower end, 200 divided by six, that's 33. 33 to 85 milliliters Q4 hours for their flushes. So for me, uh, it really depends on a few other uh, aspects of what kind of flushes I would give them. But for this patient, you could do Q60 or uh, 60 Q4, or you could do 85 Q4. It doesn't really matter. It's here, neither here nor there. Um, but these are some things you need to consider when you're deciding uh, flushes for your patients. Are they on any diuretics? So look through their note. Do they have furosemide? Do they have a Lasix? Are they on a diuretic? A diuretic causes people to pee. They have too much fluid on board. They're getting a diuretic. So if the doctor has prescribed your patient a diuretic, they may not want them to be getting a bunch of additional fluids as flushes. They need some fluids, but maybe we'll just stick to the 60 instead of going higher than that if they're on a diuretic. Another thing to consider is some people will actually have a feeding tube, but also be eating. And that feeding could tube could be a nasogastric feeding tube, or it could be a percutaneous uh, feeding tube, whether it's a PEG tube or a J tube through their abdominal wall. And so if they're on a fluid restriction, let's say they're on a fluid restriction uh, in their diet order, that might also indicate to me not to give them too much fluid on these flushes. Also, we can take a look at their sodium level. If they're hypernatremic, their sodium level is too high, then they may be dehydrated. If we give them additional fluids, we can help bring that uh, sodium level down. So I might actually give them 85 mils an hour. I might give them 100 mils an hour. I might give them 150 mils an hour. It really depends. Uh, there's so much that goes into deciding all this stuff, so I can't give you a straight answer. But uh, if their sodium level is too high, I might give them more fluid. And if their sodium level is too low, I'll give them less fluid because the sodium level could be low because they have too many fluids on board and that will dilute out that blood sodium level. So the sodium looks low. It's not that their sodium amount is low, it's that it's being diluted by too much fluid. So check their sodium level. 
As I mentioned earlier, we could do standard flushes or we could meet their needs. For this person, let's say they're um, NPO but sips of water okay and they're drinking a little bit of fluid, I'd be okay with our standard 60 mil flushes, Q4 hours. Um, or if they're on the medical floor and they don't have a lot of IVs and they're not getting a ton of additional fluid intravenously and they're really relying on their uh, feeding tube to give them all of their needs, then I'm gonna actually going to meet their needs and give them 85 mils Q4 hours. As I mentioned before, check their IV fluids. In the computer, in the electronic health record, there's I's and O's, intake and output. And you can see um, either there or under a pharmacy medication list if they're on IV fluids. So if you see they're on normal saline or uh, D5 or uh, normal saline or half NS uh, or lactated ringers, they could be on a bunch of different kinds of IV fluids. So if they're getting IV fluids, we may not want to fluid overload them with 100 or 125 mil flushes. And as I said again earlier, fluid restriction. You need to take into consideration what the physician wants for that patient. And that's really the take home message is always coordinate with your, uh, your interdisciplinary team. So coordinate with the doctors, coordinate with the nurses, what kind of fluids? If you're not sure, ask the doctor, do you want me to meet their fluids with um, flushes or are you okay monitoring their fluids with the IV and I'll just give them a standard 60 Q4 hour flushes. So have that open dialogue. Now in the ICU, in this hospital, most of the time they're on so many IV fluids that as dietitians, we are involved less in giving them additional fluids to correct sodium levels or hydration status. As patients downgrade and move to the medical floor and they're off of their IV fluids, then we will increase their flushes to meet their needs. And of course, the longer the patient is on tube feeds, the more likely it is it's going to be our responsibility to make sure that their hydration needs are met. So always have a conversation with the physician on what they're looking for. That way you can make sure you're doing the right thing. But otherwise, if you're not sure what we do standard across the board is Q4 hours or every four hours, six times a day, we'll give this person flushes and uh, we could just make it either 60 if you want. It's very, very close to their needs. You could make it 85. So I hope you found some value in this video. I appreciate you watching. So stay tuned for more content. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so. And if you have any questions, post them down below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.